Hey guys, and welcome back to another Ego Moss review. I, of course, am Captain Foley, and today we are going to be looking at the special edition XL USS Reliant that just came out yesterday, October 4th. Um, so we're going to take a look at this and see what we can see. Um, we're going to start, of course, with the, the magazine, as we tend to do. So here it is, the USS Reliant NCC 1864 Special Issue. And it's got on the front here, Miranda class, length 233 meters, 11 decks, and Captain Clark Terrell. <clears throat> and inside it's the standard Eagle Moss format, of course. you got the, how to put it on the display stand here. And over here you've got, and instead of from the front, because I think it's from the front on the smaller version of the magazine, um, you got it from the side here for the XL Special Edition, which is nice. Uh, first appearance, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, class Miranda. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, last scene. Uh, designed by Mike Miner and Joe Jennings and Captains Clark Terrell. It's the same kind of information there. So, uh, Shelf, we pointed out at this point that there's a uh, USS Avenger class blueprints that were out before TNG, um, where this was the Avenger class, not the Miranda class. Um, and it was actually more of a beefed up version. Um, it, had a, it was a little more powerful than what the Miranda eventually was uh, with mecha phasers and things like that. Um, so I prefer the Avenger class. It sounds better, but anyway. So we get into the magazine here. It's got a little article talking about Second Chance, talking about the uh, Wrath of Khan and going back and visiting, revisiting Space Seed and Harv Bennett in charge there. Um, and just goes on to talk about that and more shots from um, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Um, <clears throat> of course, Nicholas Meyer, who directed, and then Carol Marcus, David Marcus, Captain Terrell, and Savick, all featured here, um, talking about them. And it's interesting that Nicholas Meyer wasn't really a Star Trek fan. And usually when you hear that somebody's not a fan of a franchise, they don't do a great job. And sure, Star Trek II kind of fell outside the box of what Star Trek was before, especially with the more militaristic uniforms and, and things like that. But I think he did a fantastic job, and it's one of the most beloved Star Trek movies. So, <clears throat> Ooh, there's some interesting uh, art design here for the Reliant. And interestingly enough, of course, they re redressed the uh, Enterprise bridge sets for the Reliant, different colored chairs, a few different changes. And it's interesting that Kirk and Khan never once shared a scene together, but there's so such dynamic uh, tension between the two. Here, of course, is the redesign of the uniforms and check off. Um, I never forget the face. But everybody says Chekhov wasn't on the Enterprise at that point, but he was. He just wasn't one of the bridge officers at that point. Either that, or he was in the washroom, Kirk or Khan met him in a corridor, maybe bumped into him. Um, Chekhov's pretty pretty easy to remember, especially with the accent and being a young you know, officer. He'd make an interesting impression. So, oh, that's cool. I've never seen that before. Close up of a... Of a model with the uh, damage on it, uh, filming the Mutara Nebula, which is just ink in a tank, basically, a uh, water tank. So, interesting article about the Wrath of Khan. Of course, not much about the ship, because that information is in the smaller Eagle Moss Reliant, um, which I should actually go grab. There's one downstairs. We can do a comparison. Um, so, making the steady eels article in here and how Chekhov has the most famous and largest ear in Star Trek <laughs> even though Spock's ears are pointed uh, Chekhov's were was very interesting the way they did that uh, and then the CG effects for the Genesis device which was earth-shattering groundbreaking computer generated imagery at the time uh, so that was really cool just to, to see this progression and uh, I mean, you watch it back now, it still holds up, in my opinion. Um, not so much the little bars at the side, um, which look very <laughs> um, 
era appropriate CG, but the Genesis effect itself is actually pretty dynamic and pretty cool. Pretty well done, so. And that's the magazine with the Reliant on the back there. Um, yeah, so nothing really special. Doesn't really talk about the ship at all, really. Um, it's more about Star Trek II, but like I said, that's because the regular Eagle Moss release of the Reliant has all that information in that magazine. So we're going to take a look at the ship now. Here's the box. You got a great picture of the ship on the front, as with all the XL special edition models. Um, so it's a nice display piece on its own. If you, if you want to keep the ship in here, if you don't have room to display it, but you have room on a shelf up high to put a box, um, this is a still a great way to display the ship, even though it might still be in the box. Side has the classic TOS emblem or logo. Um, this side has all the other ones, except for Discovery, of course, and uh, just legalities there and nothing on the bottom except for the barcode so we'll open this bad boy up and there she is in all of her majestic glory in the packaging as always pr always well packaged with eagle moss so good job there so let's pull this bad boy out Immediately, I'm impressed with the, the size and the weight of this. It's got quite a heft to it. Um, the bottom hull is all plastic. The top hull is metal. Um, the nacelles are plastic. The roll bar is plastic, and so is the uh, torpedo pod. So just the top of the saucer and this part back here is metal, um, which is fine. Um, I gotta say, uh, Compared to the XL Refit Enterprise we got, this one is amazing because the bridge module is correct. I believe it's Mojo um, Mojo that did the, the CG uh, for this ship. Now, when I first got this, I posted a picture of me holding it like this, and Tobias Richter commented that it doesn't say Reliant on it, and it doesn't look like it does. I had to look really close. If you go in, you can see that it does say USS Reliant. It's just not very bold. It's very... The, the, the white outlines of the letters really hide it on that hull. It's hard to see. But it is there. It does say USS Reliant. <clears throat> on the bottom, it says Reliant there, as with the Enterprise. And it's got the registry number on the roll bar there as well. And United Federation of Planets. Is that what that says? Too old. I'm like Kirk in Star Trek 2. Need my glasses. Um, yeah, actually it says Starship USS Reliant. And that looks like 1864. Um, underneath there and on the other side as well. Um, but no, some great detailing on the hull. The aztec looks fantastic. The registry number looks impressive as well, with the stripes uh, leading up to these little sensor things, which are on each side of the uh, the Enterprise's deflector as well. Um, so, so smaller deflector systems or whatever there. Um, <clears throat> but the bridge module, utterly impressive, very well done. Um, the nacelles have the see-through glowy bits, so if you have a light behind them, you can actually see them glow. They didn't glow in the in the Wrath of Khan. They were like the Enterprise ones at the time with the outer in, uh, chiller grill being black and the inner one glowing when it's at warp. Um, but this is more like the ones we see in Deep Space Nine and TNG that have the more TNG style blue glow effect to them, which is fine. Uh, the registry at the back of the nacelle there looks good. It's the right size. Um, the writing on the side uh, that says uh, Starship USS Reliant, United Federation of Planets, is the proper scaling, unlike the refit where it's like huge. And uh, got some painted on windows there. No indentations for these side windows, so it's nice. They're not misaligned at all. Uh, so that was a great choice, I think, on Eagle Moss's part. The back, we got both shuttle bays, one and two with the impulse deck. Now the impulse deck is not correct really compared to the movie version. Um, the impulse deck should look like the 
the refit enterprise from the movies that we all seen and know and love and these ones look a lot elongated different shape a little bit uh, so that's worth pointing out um, the banners on the side they look great Starship Reliant all the right colors and the Delta is maybe a little bit um, fat, I guess you'd call it. Um, so there's that torpedo pod. You got the the forward and the back torpedo launchers. It's one of the no another reason that when this was the Avenger class, it was it's it's actually meant to be more powerful than the Constitution class, even though the Constitution class is a heavy cruiser. Um, I believe the Avenger class was a I don't know if it was a light cruiser or an attack cruiser, um, but it actually had more firepower than the refitted Enterprise. These on the side here are Mega Phasers, is what they're called. Um, at least they used to be called Mega Phasers. I don't know what they're called with the Miranda, but um, pretty powerful phasers that feed from the warp nacelles. Um, as we saw in Star Trek The Motion Picture, where they channel the warp plasma to the or the phasers through the, the warp thing to get, increase their power, so. Um, here, if you hold it like, like that, you can see the inner glow of that nacelle from the light, which is really nice. I do like that. Um, it says Reliant on the bottom at the back there, which is cool. You got the pennant at the top of the torpedo launcher. Now, the bottom saucer here, I don't know if you can see that. It is a little bit, it feels loose, like you can move it back and forth, you can hear it. It's not like it's, it's, like it's not pushed in enough. Um, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, other than that, the, the roll bar looks great. The alignment on the warp nacelles is spot on, which I like. I hate when warp nacelle alignments are off. It's one of my pet peeves. Um, from the front and the back, the work themselves look great. Um, <clears throat> on the bottom, you got the impulse crystal there, and a lot of nice greedy details. And same on the top, these sections with the red pin striping all around is really nice. Uh, there is an impulse crystal in there, as you can see. Um, and the red striping is neat because <clears throat> I love it on the on the hull around the registry. And this is something that in Starfleet battles um, that actually the TOS ships have that as well, which looks really cool in my opinion. Here you can definitely see the separation of the bottom of the saucer and the top, and how it can be pushed in, just not in tight, which kind of bugs me a little bit. Um, so yeah, but anyway, the red pinstriping is everywhere on this. It's around the bridge. It's around the the BC deck, like it's supposed to be. Um, there's striping along the roll bar there uh, on the bottom as well, which is nice. And it's interesting because in early production art for the refit and t the motion picture, it was supposed to have red pinstriping along the the nacelles and a lot more red pinstriping that uh, never actually made it to the final model, which is a shame because the red pinstriping really looks nice. But I love the fact that the windows don't need to be, you don't have to worry about the alignment issues because there is no indentations. That's really nice. Um, so just a fantastic job done on this model. I just wish that the XL refit would have had the proper bridge module like this one does. Um, so I don't know how, why they could do it for the Reliant, but not for the actual hero ship that we all know and love, the Enterprise, where it's more of a Phase 2 version of the bridge module. Um, just kind of a shame that way. But overall, very impressed with this. Um, really enjoying this XL design. And uh, like I said, it's got a fair heft to it. But that bottom piece, being so loose, is kind of a annoyance. You can see how it's edging out there. But overall not bad. We're going to uh, 
overall, this is one of the better XL ships that I've seen, to be honest, and uh, definitely, definitely better than the refit of the Enterprise. Look at this. I can actually pull this thing. You shouldn't be able to do that. And I can't seem to peg it into whatever holes it's supposed to go into. It just keeps popping back out. So that's a bit of an annoyance. Also, I love the fact that the RCS thrusters are gold instead of yellow. I think that really shows really shows up better. I like that a lot. Um, so we're all great. I'm going to throw this on the stand now. We're going to take a look at it and wrap up this video. But guys, if you're interested in um, picking this up, you can click the link in the description below to take you to the Eagle Moss site. Check out all the stuff they have. Uh, a lot of the XL ships are fantastic. Um, the regular Eagle Moss ships are great as well. So if you guys make an order of a few ships and you want to save some money, just use the discount code TREKYARDS at, um, at checkout and they'll, they'll save you some money as well. So I should also point out the phaser ball turrets. Now, there's no bumps for the ball turrets, but they are gold as well instead of yellow. That's something I should point out. Uh, at least there's no bumps on the top. But if you look at the phasers on the bottom, there are bumps there. So you do see the ball turrets on the bottom ones. All right, so we're going to now take a look at this thing on the stand and uh, wrap up this video. So let's head over to the table. So guys, before we head on over and look at it on the stand on the table, we're just going to take a look at it compared to the smaller Eagle Moss version of the Reliant. This one was supplied to me, uh, given to me by a friend, uh, Greg McFarland, about a year ago. So thank you, Greg. I still have not done a review of this one, uh, the regular sized Eagle Moss ship, but I will get to it at some point. And the first thing I notice right off the hop, the Aztec on the larger one is much more noticeable, which is fine. It's a larger one. That's fine. But USS Reliant, the name there is much more prominent than on there. That's my one of my biggest complaints about this XL. Is that the uh, actual name of the ship is not very visible. Um, other than that, I mean, these things look good side by side. Very similar. Right down to the the nacelle um, appearance. Put this over. And like I said, I need to do a review of this small Eagle Moss Reliant at some point soon. And there we go. We'll set them up there so we can see them a bit better. There's some fit issues on the bottom of this one as well, but I'll get into that when I do the full review on it. I do like the glow coming from the nacelles on both of them. Looks very good. But, um... Very similar in their design. The XL doesn't have dark highlights on these Greeblies, like the little one does. But there's more attention to detail on spots like this, as there's nothing there. Uh, flipping over to the top again. Same kind of detailing um, here as here, but this has more accents on the Greebly parts on the torpedo launcher. Same shaped rear impulse deck. But the larger XL does have the uh, shuttle bay doors colored in blue, where the little one doesn't. So, but anyway, yeah, I thought I would at least show you the uh, small one in comparison uh, for this video. And uh, the most noticeable thing is that USS Reliant name. On the, on the hull. Stands out much more on the small one, which is kind of a shame. Here I see what they were trying to do. It just failed in its execution with that white outline. 
That being said, this one doesn't have the red pinstriping around the registry number like the large one does, which I think looks a thousand times better. So, pros and cons to both of these guys. But I thought at least worth pointing out. So there you go. All right, guys, so here she is on the stand, and the stand is nice and firm. It's got a nice, sits in there really well. So it's definitely not going to go anywhere once it's in the stand. And here you get to see a lot of that great Aztecing, a lot of that great detail. And the nacelle glow looks really cool. Even though, if you're going to be nitpicky, the one from Rathacon doesn't have that blue glow um, because we don't see the ship at warp and all we see is black chiller grills on those nacelles. So a little bit of an annoyance if you're that picky, but other than that, the real one of the beefs I have is that USS Reliant doesn't stand out enough, but it is there. But just with the way they did the the white outline, it just kind of blends in with the hull, which is a shame. And also the fact that the ball turrets don't actually have balls on them. But that's all right. The window placement, not having grooves inset, is nice because you don't have to worry about it being misaligned. So that's cool. Um, so overall, this is a highly recommended one. One of the better XL ships, in my opinion. Um, and you know, if you put it on a lower shelf, it looks great. I'm not a huge fan of the way they have it angled upwards on this stand. It seems kind of exaggerated, more so than normal. But I think it's a lot of times it has to do with um, weight issues and being top heavy um, or front heavy, if you will. Um, so, on a bottom lower shelf, it looks great. On a eye level shelf, it actually looks really good. Um, especially with that upward angle, you can get some nice views of it. And if you put it on a higher shelf and are looking up at it, it's actually very, very good view of it. Especially because you get to see those ball turrets that actually have the balls in them, which is nice. But the detail on the bottom is really impressive, actually. So on a high shelf, I don't usually say this too often, but on a high shelf, this one works really well. Um, but all right, guys. So I think that's going to call it wraps for this XL. Let's look at the XL Defiant from Eagle Moss. Um, a fantastic XL ship, highly recommended. Um, there are a few flaws with it as far as the nacelle grills not being uh, black like they should be, no balls on the phaser turrets, the Reliant name not standing out so great, um, and just the looseness of this bottom piece, the plastic piece, how it, it's not quite snapped in as it should be. Um, I don't know if I can fix that or not. I'll have to uh, experiment with that and see. But overall, highly recommend this ship. Um, and like I said, click that link in the description below to go to Eagle Moss and um, do some shopping. See what you can find. I know that the discount code of Trek Yards doesn't work on the XL ships, at least not all of them. It might work on some, but not all of them. So, but if you get some smaller ones with the order and you want to save yourself some money, you can definitely do so. And I would highly recommend that because... We want to help you guys out with getting these ships. So, also, Canadian, um, my Canadian peeps, as I said, October 10th is when this should be, these should be available for Canadian orders. So, keep an eye out for that. And uh, I look forward to being up, be able to update you on that when the time comes. But this ship was just released yesterday. So, I would highly recommend checking it out and maybe snagging one before they go out of stock because these will go out of stock fast. This is one of the better ones. So, Alright guys, as always, like the video, subscribe to both channels, and uh, check out other videos from us as well. Lots of cool stuff and lots of great live videos, so worth checking out guys. Also we have a Discord server now, so the link to that is in the description below. If you want to talk about this kind of stuff, join the Discord. Alright guys, this is Captain Foley signing off. See you later.
Bye-bye.